You don't have that going, do you? <laughs> no, that's good. Sleeve. That's the half length. We're going to go ahead. Alright, I think we're going to get started. You all ready? Get Leanne in place. Alright. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming tonight. This is our um, Northampton High School event team. Um, their advisor, Kate Dollard, and we are um, doing our midterm technical review. So we're about halfway through the process of building a prototype of our invention. Um, and that will be done by June, and they're going to get to go to a great conference at MIT called Eureka Fest, where they're going to be able to present their invention to um, other teams from across the country and to people from MIT and just the public and you all are, are welcome to come with the schedule out to you that starts on June 19th and I think the big public day is June 20th it's a Friday. Um, I also want to introduce Tony Perry over there in the corner he's uh, from the Lemelson MIT organization and he's been a, a great support for us sort of our overseer helper whatever we need guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so Lyric's going to let the kids take it over. This is uh, Chloe Harper and she's going to get us started. Hi, I'm Chloe and welcome to the midterm review for the Northampton High School's event team. Um, so today we'll be going over um, the purpose of the project, um, the criteria for the design, um, the organization of our team, um, three design solutions that we've been developing, um, the next steps we'll be taking, and then there will be time for questions and a discussion. Um, so currently we're trying to create a self-feathering oar, and so the premise of this invention is to produce um, a rowing oar that is able to self-feather. So users of this include beginning rowers and people with wrist strength disabilities. So currently we've been working with someone that has um, multiple sclerosis, but um, someone like an amputee could also benefit from this adaption. Um, feathering means to turn an oar after a stroke so that the blade becomes horizontal as it is moved over the water until the beginning of the next stroke. And this invention would also need to be able to square the oar or turn the oar perpendicular to the surface of the water. Um, so the criteria for the invention, um, it has to be low cost, it has to be an adaption to an existing ore, so something that you could um, just add to an ore that you buy in the store or something. It needs to be sustainable, so ideally made out of mostly recycled materials. It needs to be waterproof, light, um, it needs to translate forward and backward um, motion into a rotational motion. It needs to work quickly for fast paddling. It must adjust to fit rigors of varying design. It also must accommodate people of different sizes, and it needs to be strong enough to accommodate faster and for a sustained period. And so our team is organized into leads and specialties. So I'm the administrative lead. Um, our financial lead is Steven. Our technical leads are Leon and Jody. And then our communi communications lead is Ian. And then our specialties, we have our workshop manager, uh, Cody. Um, our computer slash CAD is Zev. And then we have um, Aoife working on the hand grip project. And so as I said before, we've been developing three different um, prototypes. And so working on the hand grip has been Aoife and Zev. Um, working on the Orlock hinge feathering mechanism has been Steve and Jody and Zev. And then working on the Orlock spring feathering mechanism has been Leon, Ian, and Cody. Thank you. <coughs> um, so 
So this is the handle grip design, and the purpose of it is to allow the rower's hand to remain still while the oar is feathering by one of the other inventions. And so there's a foam roll around the handle of the oar, and it'll be clamped tight onto the oar um, so that it remains still. And there will be a plastic, which is now cardboard because it's a model, um, roll that goes over it, and it will slide across the foam so that when you want to turn it over the hand, so that your hand can remain still while the oar is feathering. And on to design solution number two, the uh, spring and gear feathering mechanisms. Um, located right here, we have a spring which is used to help feather the oar, and it is attached to the oar and a piece near the oar lock, which we are calling the platform for now. And right here is a two-part gear system, which is to square the oar when you go through the <laughs> motion. And uh, one piece is attached to the rigger right here, and one piece is attached to the oar right here. Uh, once again, the uh, goal of the spring is to feather the oar. Um, as you can see, the spring is fastened to uh, make the oar's natural position uh, feathered. Um, when the blade is in the water, the force of the water will counteract the spring's force and keep the blade square. And then once the stroke is completed, there's no more force from the water uh, as the blade is removed um, and the spring's force uh, turns the oar to feather again. All right, so the second part of our system is the gear system, which is right here and right here. So there's two parts, the part on the rigger and the part on the oar. And the gears are gonna turn this linear motion into rotational motion, and that will square the blade. Okay, so this is the gear on the rigger. It's gonna be able to move on a track here. So a person with a stroke this long could also square the blade, and a person with a stroke a lot longer could also square the blade. <laughs> and this curved track could also extend the piece like this, and that would allow the rower to guide it. It's gonna fall, but um, all right. It would allow the rower to guide the or on the gear, towards the gear, so that it would hit it, instead of sometimes it would... Maybe we need to move. Yeah, just move. <laughs> okay, because sometimes the rower could bring the oar over too high, or it could do it just right, but this would allow continuity for the rower to know that they were going to run into the um, gear every time. Okay, and then the gear on the oar is the other part, and it would slide over the handle, and then there would be clamps clamping down here, so it would not turn when it hits this gear, and it would turn the whole oar instead. And in actuality, we would probably only need the teeth to be covering about a quarter of the oar, because it would be hitting here and just on a quarter turn, instead of a whole turn, so this is a little flawed, this model. Uh, these are some of the ways our idea meet the criteria. It converts linear motion to rotational motion. The materials it would be made out of uh, are inexpensive, and the materials are also waterproof. The spring and different settings for the ore will accommodate uh, people of different sizes. Our uh, next steps are to experiment with types of teeth on the gears, um, experiment with placement of gear on the oar, 
test out springs and strengths and uh, test our device at, at our local middle school pool. Test this out with Jim at Holyoke Grove Boathouse and he has MS. Okay, and the third design is the hinge door lock mechanism. This is the design that Seb made on the computer. Oh, it's good. That's <laughs> um, the way that our design meets the criteria. Wait, in, wait just a second. Right. Let's get the button on the door. design meets the criteria uh, is that it's a smooth and quick transition between the two or positions and it's a simple and small solution that is low cost, lightweight, and waterproof and it relies only on the rubber <coughs> motion and water pressure to feather the ore and it is made of sustainable and renewable materials. So the physics behind this, um, because we're going to use forces to uh, feather or unfeather the ore, so what's going to happen is that when we, when we are just doing nothing, the ore is actually going to be squared, like it is right now. So, when, so what we did, we made this custom design hinge, which you can see later, I guess. Uh, so what's going to happen is that when it's going to do a 90, and to not use the, 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 your, yeah, okay. to not, to stop, uh, to not use your, um, not use your whole hand. What we gonna, what we did is that you just have to do this and that instead of doing that and that, so that you're not using your hand a lot. So what's gonna happen is this, this ninety is gonna turn flip like that, so which makes the ore feather it. So you're, you're at the end of the stroke, and you just enter the water here, and you start to come back to feather it, and then the water pressure. And to undo this motion and put it into the uh, to like a regular position, um, we're gonna use water forces. So it's, when the water is gonna hit the hit the, the pad pedal, it will turn back into, um, by itself. And by starting this, doing it again and again, this should actually work pretty good. So that's the physics. I guess physics behind this idea. And the chair is just like yeah, yeah, and the chair is actually water. representing the water, which and, and, yeah. 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 <coughs> Alright. Um. This is actually just the functional mock-up of the design. Th this is really what the our, the concept of the final design. This slides onto the rigger, which is right here. This is the, what this is about. What it looks like. Slides on, bolts in place like it does here, and then the ore lock just attaches in here. And so then it allows it to um, do the same thing as that does. It just is. Does it in it? Yeah. Um, and so the way, the way, I, the way I, I made this by, um, I measured the rigor and made this model. And then I made, I, I created this model around this part. And then I, and I pasted this part around the original part. And then we 3D printed it using the And the next steps is we, we need to take the functional mock-up, combine it with the design concept, and making a functional prototype, which has the functionality of this design with the, with the design yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, the, the other next step is we need to improve the durability. Currently, it the it would fatigue it fatigues a lot. Um, so because it's made out of plastic, so we want to we're going to take this model and use it to fabricate um, a better model at the metal shop at Smith Oak. 
And we also are going to determine the point of failure and, the, and then assess the stress points. Because currently, some parts were, this, were made too thin or they were made, they weren't, they're not thick enough to avoid being made, breaking after a long period of time of usage. So we're going to use a computer program to determine what the points where the, where the stress points would be. <coughs> so, uh, wait, we have a lot of people to thank. Uh, Glenn Armitage is in here tonight. He helped us with some of the um, getting started and doing pad drawings. Colin Twitchell is here from Hampshire College. He's come many times and had us over to his lab at Hampshire College to uh, just uh, coach the kids in design process and some specific uh, design issues with our invention. Uh, Tony Perry, I, I introduce you to, and Lee Esterbrooks is not here tonight. She runs the Lemelson MIT uh, education program. Uh, John Pavel is also not here, but um, he's an inventor who's come and spent some time with us and gave us some valuable feedback about the design process. Uh, Stephanie Moore is here. She's a parent, but she also uh, runs the Adaptive Rowing Program at Holyoke Rose and um, has uh, hooked us up with Jim Brooks, who uh, is going to be testing out our, uh, our devices. Uh, he couldn't be here tonight because he's uh, not feeling well. But uh, when we actually get our device in the water, he'll be trying it out for us. Um, Jeremy Whalen, a teacher, our techno technology teacher here at North Hampton High School, is uh, who I helped out with design and the 3D printing and all the CAD drawings. He's been a great coach. Uh, Kelvin Perdosa is a custodian, but he's also a designer, inventor. He's been giving us some feedback as well. Jenny Podell, the physics teacher here, um, also has helped coaching and spent lots of time with the kids here at school. Uh, Ty Courier is not here. He's an um, engineer who's also given us some feedback. Brian Moriarty is here, another engineer who's come in and um, been invaluable in helping us uh, make some major changes to our design. Um, we also have here tonight our superintendent, John Provost. Thank you for coming. And our principal. Uh, Brian Lombardi is here. Uh, thanks very much. And all the parents, well, you guys will have to get So if anybody has uh, questions or suggestions or want to open up the floor for that. So I have a question just listening to you talk about the stress that this thing is going to have to withstand. Do you have any idea how much pressure it's going to have to live up to when it's fully functioning in a river or something? Well, pretty far, if you just see like the original th the original or system, it's like pretty thick. So a metal should be like that thick because um, the, it's not just standing the like the over pressure, it's also handling the water pressure. And we also modified it, so we're using the water pressure in our model. So I think we got to have a lot thicker material on it. So you, your theory is you want to design it so something else breaks first? Then that. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. There you go. Yeah. I know there's two types of rowing recreationally, and then a lot of the boat crews around here compete with each other. But are, are you planning to have it be uh, competitive? Well, or it's going to hit the water feathered? And uh, The thing is that we want to make it that um, it's doing the same thing as a regular oar would do, mm -hmm. but except just not use your hand a lot. And uh, we are not sure, or we are not sure, because we are not sure that if will this idea or this concept will be racing, and we don't even know if they are allowing like race, um, and uh, people race. Do you have any insight but, yeah. to that, Stephanie? Yeah, well, the, the participant who's going to do their design is for a death race, yeah. um, and there are no rules at this point for the for a self feather or so we would not be disqualified. Uh, I think actually would be uh, really welcome to in the adaptive community. I wonder who would transfer over to regular racers. Don't want to use the energy to feather. <laughs> <coughs> um, well, it shouldn't be useful for beginning rowers. So uh -huh. These guys got out on the river, uh, Stephanie got them out on the river in September, and none of us had ever rowed before. Is that true? It was a pretty comical day. <laughs> I think uh, they realized that there's actually a lot to coordinate. I sure realized that. So, you know, it'd be really useful for just a beginning rower, just getting used to the stroke and not have to think about feathering as well. Could the group talk a little bit about how you decided to do this project? Oh, me and I too. All right, well, 
we needed to come up with an idea. We wanted to have a project to submit to the Wilson MIT program. Um, and this was one of our ideas. We had a few other ideas, but this one was going to be the most reasonable, most accomplishable, we thought. And it also helped people with disabilities, which is one of the criteria for the Levinson MIT program. So we did that, and the main reason we started doing this was to help people who had disabilities to be able to row more efficiently. Um, if, so is this just for a single still, or is this something that can then be adapted to, you know, a two-man boat, a four-man boat? Well, first of all, we haven't tested this prototype yet. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's a long-term thing. It'd be awesome if we could do that, and it'd be awesome that if we could uh, put this in, everyone can use it at the same time, and uh, like all the disabled people can come together and do all the, but so far we haven't tested it yet, so we need to test that out. And was another question? Yeah. Um, if, when you you get the prototype in the water and it, and it works the way you want it to work, um, I love watching Shark Tank. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you go out and get a patent? Yeah, yep. we could do that. It would, is it was, would that be part of the process? Of the part of the design process before they even got started was to do a patent search to see if there are any similar or existing mm -hmm. designs out there. And um, so they've pretty much realized that there isn't. So it is something that they could apply for a patent for. It would be a next step for sure. Okay. Thank you. Do you guys have any idea how many hours it took to get from the um, first idea I'm, to this stage? Um, well, they have been completely efficient in entering their time in the work log. <laughs> so uh, very, very low estimate, they're up to about a thousand hours right now. And yeah, and we have spent different different times, like two years, four years. Yeah, well, that's not counting well, that's count, yeah, the yeah. hours they put in last summer writing the grant, and all last year they spent coming deciding about what project they wanted to do. Um, they've been meeting weekly, and that also doesn't count the two previous years that we submitted designs and didn't get the grant. <laughs> so they've been working for a really long time to get to this point. You've you worked a school year. Schools require 990 hours. Oh, yeah. remember that. So that means they're done? <laughs> 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 uh, that's impressive, right? Yeah. Considering you also manage your school, so nice job. Yeah. I had a question. Um, being the tech teacher here and seeing like, some of your faces down there working on SOLIDWORKS, <laughs> working in AutoCAD, or working in SketchUp Pro, uh, could you? What is it, it? As far as I know, this is the first time you've had access to some of that stuff. Um, has it helped you in this process? Has that, or like, has the three D printer helped you? Do you think that it's I, been valuable? I think it was valuable. <coughs> well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's have take that. Right. One. Well, yeah. um, this year we got we got free licenses to oh, I think all of the Autodesk programs and SketchUp Pro from some White House program I think. So that that's been really helpful because they're like very they're very expensive software and they're very useful software and it, they have all sorts of different functionality and um, I don't know if I could I don't, I don't know if I could have taken we t I took a drawing and I made the, and I made this on the computer and I turned this into physical model I don't think I could do that without a 3d printer and the, um, 3d modeling program and I think we have never done like designing before we got the solid work from MIT and that was my first time to like do some 3d stuff and I think that was a good idea Okay. So this is October to June, grant, correct? Yeah. So, so we're, I mean, obviously we're in February of that process. Um, what are the next steps? So some of the next steps there are so some of the fabrication from plastic to metal. What, where are you at in the pro what happens next, I guess? Mm -hmm. What are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> not not probably not tomorrow, but I'm going to um, re work on this more re and do like the stress test and stuff like that. And it needs to be resized, so it needs to be reworked a lot. 
think they have they have some concepts that work. They need to work out the details of making a functional product. We also have two different design solutions going on right now, yeah. and we're eventually going to have to narrow that down to one. So they're going to have to make that decision before too long. And in next October, is that when there's the final product? Oh no, it's June. Oh, so oh. And in June, they go to Eureka Fest, which is this huge invention festival at MIT. They might miss finals. We gotta look at the dates. I can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and and that's that's the culmination where all there there are fourteen other teams from across the country that receive grants this year, and those teams all come and bring their inventions. And there are um, there are college and graduate recipients of awards, and even researchers. And they're all come and they do uh, all sorts of invention stuff together and hear amazing talks. And it's really great. So that's the culminating. End of our grant. Yeah. Have you thought about, given how, how much work everybody's put into this, have you thought about how you're going to choose that process? <laughs> we did go through one narrowing down already. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to tell them how we did that? We had we had three designs originally, and how, how did we decide? Well, we went with there was complicated, complicated right, yeah. which is most the most doable. And there was one with the hydraulics one. First we thought that That's hydraulics... Right, we had four. Yeah. Yeah, we did. And uh, right. at first we thought that it could be like that big. But when I got into it, we had to find that there was a reservoir and there was like fluid and that kind of stuff. So we had to cancel a lot of ideas. I think I spent like three weeks just looking at stuff. But if it could work or not. I so. think they kind of already knew. They made a, lit, a checklist of the criteria and weighted points to them. And they each scored yeah. each of the designs by that. Yep. Remember the day yep, we did yep. that? And uh, they also used the... Their, their point system that they came up with help us narrow it down. So we'll probably do something similar to that. I have a question for the principal and superintendent. If the uh, nice, if they could, I wonder if they could get credit for this for math or science. <laughs> <laughs> All the work they put into it is more than a class. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some of them said, can we have a class that's invention? <laughs> can we have an invention class? That would be pretty fun. Oh, we didn't even talk to them today. <laughs> we can talk about the gym. I just came up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Is, yes. This is a great you, you start off with four ideas, and now you're down to two. Were the, were the teams working together on their how they approached the four ideas? Did they approach them differently? I mean, what did you learn in terms of the process that you would do differently to maybe get to the answer more quickly? Have we gotten here more quickly? Well, can you explain it more? How you get it? Well, I mean, you know, you had you came up with four different ideas, uh -huh. and you went through a bunch of processes. You probably did some dead ends, as you said, yeah. and so forth. And what did you learn about that? That you know, were, were the approaches to the four different, or did you all use the same steps? Well, you know, if you did this again, what would you do differently? First of all, when we started that four groups, we had a small, small group, not like big groups. So we were individually working on ideas, and we were checking with Colin and other engineers. And so when we did the research, I thought it was like it's not going to be possible. But we kept that back. Like if we if we wanted like a, go back to and come and put some ideas into that. But I guess we then we also had meetings like oh if this is going to work or not. So then. Eventually, we had these two ideas, and then we reassigned the groups, and then we got into groups again. So that's how I put it. And if someone has another idea, like a new one, they can just introduce it. So that, that's how we did it. For the, for the, the, uh, I came up with one of the four um, ideas beforehand. Which for, since when I came up with the idea, it was, I just like thought of it. I didn't, I didn't, there wasn't like any real world inspiration from it, which I, which was because it was it was like modifying the whole ore and, and like cutting parts of it, which I didn't think about how how um, challenging that would be, and so from not like so not having not knowing like what would be possible that that like I I know from like next time I I'd, I'd have to wanted to like look for inst like real world inspiration for stuff that other things that are sim like work the same way. Kind of. Also, that'd be helpful if we, if we had like a working engineer every single second, so we can just be like, oh, if this is gonna work, if this is gonna work. That was also kind of like a bad thing for us because we had to wait for Colin or someone else to come in and check our ideas. 
so if we do this next time, I would have, I would like if we have an engineer, so we can be like, oh, I made this, can you check this out? Because we are still working on it, but it'd be nice if we had. We would have more mentors yeah, in more place mentors. earlier. That would have been a really good thing. <laughs> Bounce your ideas off of other people early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Well, just following that, I mean, if you did in the future want to do something and you wanted to collaborate, you know, via you know, email, or whatever, uh -huh. you know, Yeah, but the, uh, yeah, that's good. Any more questions? Yes. Let's let's say I get home tonight and I it's something sparked and I want to ask a question or make a comment. Is there somebody that I, on the team that I should contact or what should I do? <laughs> can, <laughs> can can you put like an email address or something on the board just in case if people want to get in touch, maybe they get home and they think of something they want to share with you? website where um, I think all of this information is up and there's lots of pictures from when we went rowing and stuff so if you want to check that out. It's a Google site. Yeah, it has all our contact information. Yeah, we can write that down as well. And there's, I think we have all the phones and emails and stuff like that in there too. Mm -hmm. Good question. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, another question? So it was 6000 in the grant. Where are you in spending that? <laughs> <laughs> Not as far as Lomos and OAT would like it to be. <laughs> I think it's all of our inclination to be like, oh, be careful about spending too much money. But So we're pretty underspent right now. We're only about 30% of the way through of our uh, budget. So we need to go spend some money. Yeah. Um, I have a question, but I also want to acknowledge and um, thank you, Jeremy and Jenny, um, for giving the time. Because mm -hmm. clearly a thousand hours goes both ways. Yeah. Um, so it's noticeable and much appreciated for what it does for our students um, at Northampton. So thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. If you want to come up and look, you guys can show them some stuff and enjoy some food, please.